And welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. Today we're talking about trans-equatorial coronal holes and the shifting of the polarity of the heliospheric current sheet. There was a coronal mass ejection in the past 24 hours. It's not in the Earth-facing vicinity. You can see evidence of it up here in the northwest. Northeast, rather. Right up in this area. It was on the far side of the sun. This view here is 171 angstroms. A specific band of ultraviolet light emitted from ionized iron. And the data is from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Here is the intensity gram. All sunspots have remained fairly stable here over the past 24 hours. Sunspot 2835 hasn't changed much. Neither has sunspot 2836. Nor has 2837. 2837 did grow some leading umbrae. You can see some a little bit of umbral growth. I'll say 2837 grew a little bit. And the likelihood of solar flares is going up as sunspot 2835 approaches the limb. And it all has to do with the way metals emit photons. We won't get into it for the daily space weather. Here's 304 angstroms ionized helium, the best wavelength at showing filaments from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And there are quite a bit of filaments in between the Sun and the Earth right now. Here's a diagram of the solar system. There's where things will be in one week. Looks like new moon will fall on July 9th. Here's a star chart. If you're up before dawn, you might see Jupiter and Saturn up there near the ecliptic as well as the moon. I use in-the-sky.org. Let's blast through more data. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux still at 94 solar flux units. Here's the one-year chart of that. It's the black line. The most proportional feature of sunspot number is the 10.7 centimeter radio flux. As cycle 25 ramps up in activity, no solar storms forecasted here by NOAA. That's the Space Weather Enthusiasts dashboard. If you'd like to go look it up yourself, go have a look. Let's talk about earthquakes. There's been a massive lull of seven magnitude earthquakes. Let's go back to the year 2019. You see how many red bars there were? Look at 2018. Look at how many red bars there were. The last 90 days, look at how few red bars there are. We are due, big time, for a 7 magnitude earthquake. So here is the uh, world view here sorted by 4 plus. There's the only 5 plus showing up in the northern Indian Ocean there. Let's check out the list from USGS. It's quite low in levels of uh, earthquake activity couple of deep quakes like these mid four level ones but really a very low number of earthquakes there's the largest of the past 24 apparently a 5.4 in the southern Indian Ocean looks like the northern Indian Ocean to me but okay and we're just scrolling up the list let us know if we miss anything here leave us a comment a deep quake in South America there at 4.4 magnitude at 203 kilometers. Just low levels of earthquake activity here for the past 24 hours. Papua New Guinea saw a 4.9 magnitude at 214 kilometers. Let's look at volcanoes. There's been some eruptions happening, including Mount Etna on the Isle of Sicily. Apparently the eruption has stopped, though. A Biko producing a 10,000 foot ash plume over Paramushir Island. Subano Sejima has exploded unknown volcanic ash cloud. And Tal, the Tal volcano near Manila, Philippines, produced a friato magmatic explosion, possibly caused by water mixing with magma which can cause, well, explosions. Sulfur dioxide emissions reached 6,685 tons per day and continue at above average levels, hopefully less VOG in the city of Manila, the highly populated city of Manila. Tacono exploding, flight level 070, it's a 7,000 foot ash plume. Fuego at Guatemala exploding as well, 15,000 foot ash plume produced by that volcano. Sabancaya exploding 20,000 foot ash plume 
please don't pull vault the caldera. We must say it daily, because there are very, very stupid people on the internet. Of course, not our viewers. All of our viewers are borderline geniuses. However, make sure you tell others not to pull vault the caldera. If you're thinking of pole vaulting a caldera, uh, if you're thinking of pole vaulting a caldera, let me dissuade you from that right now. Don't pull vault the caldera. That public service message brought to you by smashomash.com. Here's the x-ray flux over the past three days. Earth facing quiet going on still. Don't be surprised to see this increase precipitously at any moment. <clears throat> As the sunspot situation is pretty significant right now. Here's the proton flux over the past three days. No coronal mass ejection strikes and no spikes in the proton flux. Here's what our title was talking about. The change in the heliospheric current sheet polarity. Earth is now in a south pole oriented current sheet, it looks like. As there's a bit of a polaric battle going on between the north and the south solar polar fields. Also an overlapping transequatorial series of both polarity coronal holes, which we'll show you in a minute. Anyway, here's the latest image. And you can see here Earth looking like it's going to be in a South Pole-oriented current sheet, although quite close to a boundary, obviously. Otherwise, it wouldn't be so chaotic. As you can see there from the last couple frames, I'll let it play through one more time for you. So you can see the chaos in the current sheet, yes. So here's the line of sight ecliptic plane field plot. It also shows you the solar magnetogram. And that blue line gives you insight into where the BZ is located in the solar wind data, which we'll show you momentarily as well. Here's the line of sight coronal hole plot. And we are seeing some coronal holes right in this area here, right around the solar equator of both polarities. So that's a major thing going on. As the solar polar field reversal cycle continues, and here's some more imagery of that. You can see them showing up now detected here. You can see a North Pole and a South Pole oriented coronal hole overlapping the same zone here. On the left pane there, that's the detected coronal holes imagery. Sunspot 2835 remains a Beta Gamma Delta class sunspot. It does have the capacity to produce M class flares. Don't be surprised to see some as it approaches the limb. Yes, sunspots are more likely to produce large flares around the limb than in the Earth-facing portion of the solar disk. Here's the KP index, a measurement of global geomagnetism over the past three days. Geomagnetic calm conditions, a KP of 1 over the past 24 hours. And next we'll go to the real-time solar wind, which has been pretty uneventful here in the past 24. Current conditions are... Solar wind density around four and a half protons per cubic centimeter, a little under five proton, a, around four and a half protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind velocity 431 kilometers per second. Next, Geospace Magnetosphere movies. It's four hours of data courtesy University of Michigan showing magnetohydrodynamic pressure in the Earth geospace. We're seeing fairly homogeneous pressure here over the past four hours. We show the data daily as the archival data is not yet publicly accessible as far as we know. Next, we'll look at ground magnetic perturbations, geospace delta B. And we show this daily as well due to the polar excursion currently taking place on planet Earth. The Earth has two North Poles. One of them's over Canada, one of them's over Siberia. And the South Pole is someplace off of the Antarctic continent south of Australia, thousands of miles from the geographic South Pole. That's four hours of data also. Ground magnetic perturbations. Now we do stream live regularly, and we're going to do it again today. If you haven't checked out the mobile app yet, or our URL at Twitch, check out twitch.tv slash smashomash. It's a top-notch live streaming platform. Again, we will stream live to it today for our meteorology segment. Most of all, thanks to our new subscribers over on YouTube. Thanks for leaving comments, etc. Please tell your friends and foes 
about the channel. There's probably something for everybody. Also, check out our playlists. And thanks again to our YouTube subscribers. We're also on BitChute. Look for more exclusive content coming there. If you want to join our Discord chat, our Discord chat is linkable. You need an invite to the Discord chat, and it is linkable at our homepage. So if you check out our social media links, right there is the permanent invite to our Discord channel. Linkable from smashamash.com. Smashamash.org will redirect you. Today's featured product is available by clicking on the Smasho store link from the homepage. It's the Smasher Price My First Pandemic t-shirt, an homage to the pathetic and infantile response of mankind, where apparently a lot of people still don't seem to understand that non-pharmaceutical interventions are utterly ineffective at preventing viral transmission. But in any case, there's the shirt. It's still there on the Teespring shop. You can still link to it from the Smash to the Smasho store here from our homepage. Smasher Price, my first pandemic, the pathetic and infantile response where mankind decided to try to mask up the planet in order to ineffectively combat a virus. Today's cosmology segment will be brief. It's the astronomy picture of the day, a close-up of granules and umbrae and penumbrae. It's sunspot 2835. Great imagery there. And that's from yesterday at 2.29 Universal Time. Awash in a sea of incandescent plasma and anchored in strong magnetic fields, sunspots are planet-sized dark islands in the solar photosphere. The bright surface of the sun found in active solar regions, sunspots look dark, only because they are slightly cooler, though. With te- okay, I'm not going to read any more because that is not why sunspots appear dark. That's a ridiculous explanation of why sunspots appear dark. Let's continue on. Today's cosmology segment was integrated into the Daily Space Weather video. Check out our other cosmology segments via our playlists, youtube.com slash smashamash slash playlists. There are like 180 cosmology segments in there, and they're all relevant to this day. Let's take a look at electrons. We did see some high levels of electrons here for a moment. That has subsided, and we see no charging hazards as electrons can charge up satellites. Here's the one-year chart of that from Solon.info. Here's the three-day chart of the electron flux. It's in moderate re- moderate levels. Here's the electron content forecast. And NOAA forecasting a little uptick in electron flux here. I won't argue that. Here's a total electron content forecast visualization showing you the entire air column and the likelihood of GPS errors. The redder the blob, the more likely significant GPS errors are to occur. I'll let it play through a second time as we saw some very high levels here over northern Africa. See those orange blobs popping up there? Those are quite high levels of electron flux, and if you were under that area trying to communicate with your GPS, you'd probably see errors of thousands of miles if you didn't have location accuracy services turned on. That's today's total electron content forecast. Here's a diagram of the atmosphere, Van Allen belts, and so on. And next we'll look at the ionosphere, which is looking anomalously once again. This is the F layer, which is located about 300 kilometers of altitude in vibrational frequency. Each blob represents 1 million vibrations per second, otherwise known as megahertz. Sadly, the resolution of this map is only 1 megahertz, so I don't know why it says 1.00, 2.00. It should just say 1 through 14. But in any case, we're seeing some anomalies here once again, some high vibrational frequencies over the South Pacific Ocean and South America. So right about where my pointer is here, I'll let that play through again so you can see the anomalies in the ionosphere. Probably caused by the South Atlantic anomaly, the weakest point in the Earth's magnetosphere. But in any case, there's the data. We hope it enlightened you. Wow, some some very uh, sudden charge-ups and charge-downs there of the ionosphere. So here's the latest image. That one's coming through at 8.30 universal time. And again, the F ionosphere layer is located at about 300 kilometers. It's one slice 
of the atmosphere. And it's time to do a meteorology segment. Make sure you check out our meteorology segments as well. There's a playlist for it, youtube.com slash smashamash slash playlists. All right, and we just did our meteorology segment. Make sure you check that out. If you're only watching the Daily Space Weather videos, we've got lots of other playlists. Here's the bonus segments for our Daily Space Weather. This is the hydrogen alpha imagery from the ground-based observatory at Udaipur, India. And it looks like we see some flaring coming out of sunspot 2835. Once again, you can see some brightening happening there. Right out of the center of the umbra, it looks like. Also, you can see a bunch of plasma filaments, these dark areas. These are all filaments. Here come some additional bonus features. It's the thematic map. Part of the NASA GO-16 SUVI suite. And you can see some pink showing up there. That is indeed flaring. It's x-rays, folks, x-rays. It's a bright x-ray region. And all these dark orange areas, those are all filaments. And you can see there is uh, some coronal hole being detected here. Uh, it's got both polarity, so it's pretty interesting. Next, I'd like to thank our patrons. Thanks, patrons, the true source of funding for the content. We'll be updating the credit crawl soon. Patreon.com slash smashamash if you want the first alerts on all kinds of other science data that nobody else gets. In fact, we uploaded an interesting conversation from YouTube comments yesterday in text format, which only our $15 per month condensed matter to the ninth power tier is able to see. Here come some more bonus features. There's the latest intensity gram of the closest star. Here's the magnetogram. And here's an extreme close-up of sunspot 2835 and 2836. There it is in colorized magnetogram. Sunspot 2836 is about to be reclassified as an alpha-class sunspot as the trailing umbrae have evaporated. And let's take a look at 2837 as well since it grew a little bit. There's 2837 in colorized magnetogram. There it is in intensity gram. And that is indeed a beta class sunspot. It still does harbor the type of magnetic field complexity required for significant solar flares, although this one, 2835, is still likely to produce an M class flare, especially as it approaches the limb. And we'll close out the daily space weather with a composite imagery here. This is 211, 171, and 304 angstroms which is two different ionized states of iron and one ionized state of helium. And last but not least, colorized magnetogram. You can see a little bit of intensification here of sunspot 2837. The other two, 2835 and 2836, have remained mostly calm. Thanks for tuning into the Daily Space Weather video. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash -a mash Congratulations on finding out that our channel exists and may that solar wind be at your back.